Welcome to Baker Communications Customer Outcome Selling eLearning course. In this lesson, we will learn how to create and deliver a superior elevator pitch. So imagine a scenario with me. It's probably happened to you many times. You step onto an elevator and someone says, hey, I see you here all the time. What do you do? What's your typical response to that question? Well, let me ask you another question. If we were to ask your competitors that same question, what do you think they would say? Well, probably something similar, if not exactly the same as your response, right? It doesn't matter if it's in an elevator or when we walk into a board meeting. We want to make certain that when we engage people, we do so in a clear, concise, and compelling manner. Now, within the thread of compelling, that means we deliver our message with differentiation. So in this lesson, we're going to work together to craft an elevator pitch that accomplishes each of these objectives. Doesn't matter if we're presenting to an opportunity or to my 20-year-old son. We want to have people, one, actively engage in what we're saying. Secondly, we want them to remember what we've said. And then third, we want them to feel compelled to take action. So in an effort to create a clear, concise, and compelling message, we will use this tool and together we're going to walk through three simple steps to help us craft our superior elevator pitch. Let's get started. The first thing we do is ping the limbic by delivering a headline that they don't expect and one that's centered on the customer, not on our pitch and certainly not on our solution. Next, we post three signs. That is, we quickly state the titles of three values or features that we provide which sync with the marketplace and with our customer. And then we unpack and expand on what our three stated values or features mean to our customer and to the market that we serve. Before I continue, let me provide a little additional clarity around a phrase that might be new to some of you, ping the limbic. In fact, when you first heard me utter that phrase, some of you were like, Ping the limbic, what's that mean? Well, the brain basically has two parts. And the logical part of our brain we refer to as the neocortex. Now, this is the part of our brain that allows us to compute. So right now, while I'm speaking, the neocortex is moving the sounds coming out of my mouth into words. And it's computing those words into sentences and then translating those sentences into meaning. So our neocortex, our logical processor, is what allows us to understand things like facts and figures and my long list of features and benefits. But what's interesting about the logical part, it can't feel anything. So it knows what's been heard and what's been observed, but it doesn't have the ability to have any feelings towards those observations. That part of our brain is called the limbic. And it consists of multiple structures, and it's 100% emotional. Now, what's intriguing about it is that the limbic is the part of the brain that ultimately makes decisions for us. Now, I know that some of you are listening to that, and you're, you're reacting against it. It's the logical part of you that's saying, wait, wait, wait. I'm a logical processor. I make all my decisions based on facts and figures. Well, neuroscience reveals the reality is all of our decisions are made at the emotional center of our brain. Oftentimes, as a sales professional, I find that I tend to speak to the logical part of the brain. So I give out large doses of facts and figures and features and my amazing benefits of my solution. And unfortunately, what happens is I'm throwing all of that at the logical part of your brain, but I'm leaving the limbic completely alone and untouched. So in order to have our customers become even more interested in listening to us, as in, becoming actively engaged in what we're saying, the very first thing that I want to do right off the bat, I want to ping the limbic. So to accomplish this, we're going to begin by piquing our customer's curiosity. We want to stir up the emotions. We want to create a catalyst to the endeavor that allows our interactions to have a different impact right off the bat. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So what do you do? Oh, uh, I deliver training to many of today's Fortune 500 companies. Now, when we hear that introduction, we immediately sound like a broken record. 
And yet most of us have been trained to introduce ourselves just like that. And as it comes out of our mouth, our customers hear that as the wah, 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 just like Charlie Brown's teacher, right? There's nothing that engages the curiosity or excitement. There's nothing that pings the limbic. And so almost immediately, they began to categorize us just like everybody else. We become a commodity. So with this in mind, one way that we can create instant differentiation and engage our customers differently is instead of starting with the what we do or the how we do it, we want to begin with the why. So our why needs to be crisp and clear and compelling. Every single time it comes out of our mouth, it needs to be automatic. And in and, and short, it needs to be the equivalent of a Twitter post, about 140 characters. So let's see what it looks like when you lead with the why. So what do you do? Well, let's just say I'm addicted to helping companies see possibilities they didn't even know existed. Wow. How did that feel? Notice I said, how did that feel? Because what happened is that passionate language, it touched your emotion. It pinged you. But there's an even better way than that. And it's called using a credible voice. So what happens is we place a statement in the context of our customer. So what do you do? Well, customers say I'm addicted to helping them and their organizations see possibilities they've never known. Wow. That's pretty good. Mm. The key is to say something that they don't expect and that does not sound like marketing hype or anything that our competitors would say. So now that we have a limbic ping, let's move to the second step and create three signposts which support retention. Your brain is uniquely wired to remember things in threes. Researchers don't even know why. But if you look around you, it's easy to see how much of our life revolves around things that occur in threes. So if we're going to communicate effectively, it becomes very helpful for us to use threes. So take a look around you. For example, in the U.S., how many blocks of numbers make up our telephone number, right? 520-483-4002, right? What about our social security number? Blocks of three. It even happens in literature, starting from our earliest age, the, like nursery rhymes. How many bears did Goldilocks run into? Right? Three. What about the letters that make up the abbreviation for every airport in the world? It's three. How many pigs did the big bad wolf go to eat? I mean, see? Three. <laughs> right? Even the literature, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of roast beef. Well, anyway, you get the idea. With all this in mind, to help people remember what we've said, we mind map the three key elements of our elevator pitch. We call those signposts, and they consist of one to three words which describe the key deliverables. Now, they're only signposts. They provide a mental map, or think of it like a mental GPS. The description is going to come next in step three. So for now, this is only about providing a signpost. We don't want any descriptions here, just one to three words only for each milestone. Just before we share the three signposts, we should let them know it's coming in threes. Allow me to demonstrate. I am absolutely infatuated to help people see possibilities they didn't even know existed and then resourcing them with the tools and best practices to achieve even greater outcomes. At CCI, we achieve the following with a three-step approach. Number one, relevant training. Number two, attendee engagement. And number three, solution adoption. Okay, now we elaborate and we provide needed substance. After stating our three signposts, we go back to the first value and we unpack it. So let me demonstrate again. I'm absolutely infatuated with helping people and organizations achieve what they first thought impossible. At CCI, we achieve this following a three-step approach. Number one, relevant training. Number two, attendee engagement. And number three, solution adoption. Going back to number one, relevant training. All of our trainers only teach on topics that they live. And we bring you current, 
best day practices from high-performing organizations. Regarding attendee engagement, we don't just spew from a book. We get every mind actively engaged in the process of learning from beginning to end. Some of the best insight will actually come from your fellow attendees. And when it comes to number three, solution adoption, we're not a one or two, even a three-day event. We resource you with support tools and we offer ongoing coaching sessions to increase accountability, as well as a place for you to share your challenges with implementation. Now, starting back at the top, work to build out the three steps and practice your delivery. Once we're all ready, we'll demonstrate our superior elevator pitches. So, if we were to meet in an elevator, and I asked, what do you do? Or who do you work for? What would you say? What would you do? I have an idea. Attached to this lesson, we've included the three-step tool we use to create our superior elevator pitch. Go ahead and download it now. It's an interactive PDF, so you can fill in the content right here on your computer, and it should only take a few minutes. Once you're done, turn on your webcam or record your pitch on your mobile device, for it's great to hear and see how you actually deliver the pitch. And finally, we encourage you to submit your pitch, and one of our coaches will review and send you some coaching tips. Who knows? You might bump into someone today that could become your greatest client. Thank you.